Hello, hello, and welcome again to a Beatles program that is called Things We Said Today. This is a weekly podcast in which we talk about anything Beatles, anything from their past, and right up to what's going on today. I'm Ken Michaels, one of the co-hosts of the show, also known for my syndicated Beatles radio program called Every Little Thing. Being joined by my regular co-hosts, first of all, we've got from Beatles Examiner, Steve Marinucci. Hi, Steve. Hi, Ken. Hello, everyone. And we've got a couple of the writers from Beatle Fan Magazine. First of all, we have Al Sussman. Hi, Al. Hi, Ken. Hello there, everybody. And we've also got Alan Cozen from Beatle Fan. Hi, Alan. Hey, Ken. Hello, everyone. And once again, we bring back a special guest to the program. And he's someone who wears many hats in the Beatle field. He helps out Joe Johnson with his Beatle show, Beatle Brunch. He also writes for Beatle Fan, and he also helps out uh, the Fest for Beatle Fans. He helps Mark Lapidos out every single year. His name is Tom Franjone. Hello, Tom. Welcome back to the show. Hey, guys. Great to be back. Uh, you know, Ken, as you were reading the intro to the show and you said, boy, we talk about what's going right up to today. You ain't kidding this time. <laughs> you know? No, well, in the last yeah. few days, a lot has happened, and uh, actually... It's a great thing that we have Tom on the show because we're going to cover a, a couple of topics here. And Tom was a part of the first one. I thought that, uh, well, actually, we're recording this on February the 16th on a Monday. And a couple of days before that, on Valentine's Day, to be exact, in New York City at Irving Plaza, Paul McCartney gave a secret show. And it was actually late in the evening. And Tom actually attended that show. So he can give yeah. us a lot of details all about it. And uh, we first heard about it, at least I did anyway, from Steve posting it on Beatles Examiner. And uh, Tom, maybe you could shed some light about how this news broke and what it took to actually get into the show. Sure. Um, well, as you know, Steve had been reporting and some other outlets had been reporting, you know, we knew Paul would be in town, obviously, this weekend for the Saturday Night Live show. And there was some rumor you know, like that, that always follows him. Will he do a secret show? Stuff like that. And Irving Plaza had been kicked around at least by midweek, I would say. And because of the Saturday Night Live thing, and P.S., the NBA All Star game was in New York here this weekend, too. Um, much of the talk, at least that I had heard, was it may be the SNL, you know, cast party. It may be something that they do at NBC on Saturday night because. For truly for Saturday Night Live, they uh, they showed uh, an old tape, actually the first episode, so the studio wasn't being used. So there was a lot of conjecture, uh, which really went right up through Showtime, uh, oddly enough, under some other topics. But you know, thinking nothing of it, because there was nothing uh, that that came out through the website or anything else. Actually, Friday night, right around this time, I was home from work and got a call from crowd surge the people that do the ticketing for paulmccartney.com uh you know when they do the pre-sales and things and when i saw that name come up on the caller id i i didn't make the initial connection i know i bought something from them for all i know it was a rolling stones t-shirt or something but i picked it up and they they basically introduced themselves and said well yeah we're doing paul's ticketing and he's doing a secret show and he wants to be sure that some of his biggest fans in the area are there, and that's why we're calling. So, you know, clearly it had my attention. Uh, they would not tell us where the show was. They would not tell us what time it even was. Um, I tried to, you know, keep my composure, and and I asked. I said, oh, is this the thing at Irving Plaza? And there was a little <laughs> delay, and they said, they said, well, we really can't tell you. They, and I said, well, what time does it, you know, would it be? And they said, well, we can't tell you that either. I said, well, I, you know, now I start lying through my teeth. I said, well, I'm going to have to work, you know. And, um, you know, <laughs> how will I know? And, you know, I'm just trying to get any information I could. And they said, look, if you want to go, you know, just let us know. You, it would be for you and a guest. The only thing they would tell us is that it would, it would be $40, cash on the barrel head. No, no fees or credit cards or any of that. Uh, you know, and as we were saying earlier, uh, offline, you know, I think the, the ticket master fee was more than that last time he rolled through New York. Um, so I said, sure, I'm interested. I said, what next? They said, well, well, they verified my email address through the um, phone number that they had. So clearly they were using the paulmccartney.com uh, website, you know, uh, registry 
to get through this. Mm -hmm. So they said, we'll send you an email later tonight with the information or with some information. A few hours later, that email showed up and uh, it's actually posted. I, when I sent it out, it's on our website, brunchradio.com. You can see a, a copy of the invitation and it's you know, it's such a form letter. It says, you know, to my Valentine, and then there's a space for your name. So it's got Paul's picture and says, to my Valentine Tom, uh, you know, I'm coming to New York and there's nothing I'd like more than, you know, for you to join the show or whatever. All that they gave was the address of a hospitality suite at a, at a downtown hotel and said, pick up your tickets between 4 and 9 p.m. on Saturday. So that being said, you knew it would be a late show. And that's really all we got out of it at that point. Um, they did say, you, you know, you could do two wristbands, but whoever you were getting the other wristband for would have to be with you because they weren't just going to give you a wristband, and they obviously wanted to keep scalping at it a picture. So I said, great, you know, uh, I'm in. And uh, the next morning woke up, and that's when it was announced on Paul's website. They did confirm Irving Plaza, and as... Um, our friend Bob Gannon uh, reported on on Steve's website. Uh, they did a very limited number of you know walk up uh, purchases Saturday morning, and you have to remember Irving Plaza is a very very small hall, top to bottom. It's a thousand twenty five people, and because the room was was papered, I mean it was a ton of Saturday Night Live people there and other people from uh, you know the big weekend in town. That takes up, for any of you that have been to Irving Plaza, the, the loge or the upstairs. So best guess is, you know, the lower half, maybe five to 600, you know, people got in. So with, with that said, we now knew where it was. We just didn't know when it was. I talked to Bob Gannon, who's uh, one of our super fans and friends, uh, who had gotten the wristband, and he had provided the information that they had told him when he got his wristband in the morning, come back around 9, 930 and get in line. Said okay, so now now the pieces are coming together. Nine nine thirty, you figure by the time they get you in there, get you situated, and you know test the house PA and everything, we were figuring around ten thirty that show would kick off. So we drove into the city, got our bracelets. What was really cool, they did a nice job uh, in this hospitality suite because it was Valentine's Day. After checking the IDs and giving you the wristbands, they gave you um, an envelope with some Hershey kisses, you know, chocolate kisses and foil hearts, and everybody got a long stem rose. So, uh, you know, some good boyfriend points there. That that definitely helped. <laughs> um, and uh, and what they did is they took pictures. They had a, a little backdrop set up with a little um, a love seat. And, you know, teddy bears and balloons and flowers and hearts and all this stuff. And they said, Paul wants pictures of everyone, you know, uh, you know, you know, that's coming through the, you know, the website through the fan club. Uh, he's going to post them either, you know, on on the website or who knows if they do a DVD. Maybe, you know, they use some in the books or whatever. But they they really did a nice job at that. Um, with that, they said, you know, they, they told us exactly what they told the people in the morning. Uh, get over to the venue by 9, 930. So. Uh, we were in the city around 7, 7.30, so it gave us time to go grab a bite to eat. Got there for 9.30, and we were in and standing the, the equivalent of about five, six rows deep from the stage uh, by 9.45. It was pretty orderly. People, of course, were not really pushing and shoving, but everyone was really trying to get as close as they could. Actually, about 10 minutes before showtime, somebody actually, you know, passed out or fainted or something like that kind of, uh, you know, part the the sea there and get get them out. But uh, he hmm. came on at just after 11, and um, they played, it was two dozen songs, again, on the, on the website. Uh, we've published the set list. It was two dozen songs, and it ran just about 100 minutes. So probably, I uh, figure, two-thirds of what his regular stadium show was. But interestingly... It was, you know, paring down a, a good chunk of what he played is is found in a typical set list. There were some definite surprises, and he, some of the big surprises were the things that didn't make the final cut. Um, no mm -hmm. complaints, just observing. But you know, when's the last time you went to a McCartney show and didn't get banned on the run or yesterday? Okay, it's been a long time. Um, mm, yeah. But this I was, noticed it was, it, it was he decided didn't do live in that time. No, well, he couldn't do that in that place. No, not with the, the, you know, the fireworks. No. I mean, well, you know, you know, Tom, he he did it at the joint in Las Vegas, which yeah. is also a very small 
Paul. And I'll tell you, my ears were, were shot for a couple yeah. of days. Well, this, this so, is, you know, for anybody who's been to Irving Plaza, I say it's, it was standing room only. And again, my back is still not forgiven me for that one. Um, mm, but bet. it was a, you know, the set list, in addition to what wasn't there, uh, there was also some juggling. So songs that are typically played certainly in the first five songs of the night, things like Jet and Drive My Car, ended up in the rock and roll set at the end, along with, you know, like, you know, situated among back in the USSR and stuff like that. We got a couple of oldies, which was kind of cool. He did It's So Easy by Buddy Holly, which, you know, he's done at Buddy Holly Weeks and things, and I, I believe he did it uh, on a couple of the the shows a couple of years ago when his uh, cover version came out. He certainly played it when they were down in Texas, but mm-hmm. certainly that's not one you get every night. And he mm-hmm. did Matchbox, which was kind of cool because, you know, well, I mean, it's been virtually every sound check set list, but, uh, you know, doing it live, I, I don't remember him doing it except going back to like the, I guess the first comeback to like the 89 tour, doing it live, you know, during the show. And the... What made it kind of interesting, uh, if you go look at the set lists, uh, Ringo was on tour this weekend, and Saturday night also did Matchbox. So I'm not sure if that's the first and only time, but how often does that happen? Two Beatles playing the same night, doing the same song. Mm-hmm. That's got to be that's, that's got to be a rare mm-hmm. one. Um, uh-huh. He also played uh, One After 909, which he's done on a very small number of occasions. He did it uh, here at the Apollo a few years ago, but... It had been a long, long time since that one showed up in the set list, so that was kind of a nice curveball as well. Um, you know, obviously going in the, you know, the the speculation was, will it be all ballads tonight? You know, will it be, you know, will it be like the, you know, the Paul, you know, kisses on the bottom and and my love and all that? And he said, nah, he's doing a club. He's gonna he's gonna light it up a little bit. And it was it was pretty much a good, uh, I would as I said, a two thirds cross section of what you see, format wise in in the in the you know, in the standard set list, ended the night with um, the Abbey Road medley, of course, the love you take is equal to the love you make. Um, so that was, you know, that kind of sent everybody home on a high note. On the way out, they gave us a great uh, 11 by 17 hard stock poster, um, you know, with the, the little heart-shaped, uh, you know, hand uh, signals that he does and the date of the show and all that. Um, so, you know, they made it nice. You got a nice little souvenir on the way out. You know, his voice sounded real, real good. You know, toward the end, you could tell he was, you know, it was straining a bit. And again, it, you know, at this point, it's well after midnight. Um, and I don't know if that's past his bedtime or what, but, you know, it was, you know, it was starting to, starting to strain a bit at the end. But uh, generally, very, very good show and certainly a very, very cool night. Did you, did you get any of the, the rose petals that came down during my Valentine? Oh, I- yeah, my God. The, yeah, thanks for pointing that out, Al. There was, um, during my Valentine, which was kind of, you know, the reason you're there, it's Valentine's Day, etc. Um, there was a mix of real rose petals and uh, confetti rose petals. Tens of thousands of them falling from the ceiling. <laughs> I mean, I found some yesterday. They were, like, in my pocket and in the, you know, the neck of my jacket, and they were, they were all over the place. Uh, but we got some real ones and some fake ones. So it was it was really kind of a nice night. I mean, you know, it's certainly uh, a step up from what I had planned for Valentine's Day anyway. And, you know, Paul, you know, he's done the call him the secret gigs or the, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the, the impromptu gigs. He did them uh, in New York a couple of times. But having it on Valentine's Day, you know, given his catalog and and, you know, the, the spirit of his music and everything was really, really quite a night. Hmm. I noticed that one of the surprises, although it's it's not a big shock because he has done this live before, but I think, correct me if I'm wrong, it's it's been a while since he did every night live. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So what, it's kind of nice. When I saw the set list, you know, I thought it's been several years since he pulled that one out. I thought maybe, wasn't it that one of the like A-list, B-list things in the acoustic set maybe a, a year or two ago? It might have been. I, I, I don't have it off the top of my head, but uh, it's been a while since I've heard that one, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, how did the band sound in general? Were they very tight? Because this, it's actually been a few months since Paul has mm. done a full concert. And even though, let's let's give him credit, he tours every single year a select number of shows, so he keeps his voice in in shape somewhat because of that. He has to. But when you're mm. away from it for even a few months, and especially when you're up there in age, 
you know, mm-hmm. to keep your voice really in good shape, you've got to keep at it. So yeah. being away well, from performing a few months, did, did, did you think that Paul was, his vocals are really strong? I know you said they strained towards the end. Yeah, there was, there was some times, and you know, maybe we'll set up the discussion on Saturday Night Live, you know, you bring up a good point, Ken, you know, given his age and the demands, frankly, of, of some of his songs. I mean, Maybe I'm Amazed was never an easy song to sing. Not 45 mm-hmm. years ago either. Um, and, you know, maybe that wasn't, uh, you know, without getting too far ahead of ourselves, the right one to, you know, to give one night's uh, practice to and then jump out there last night. But he, his voice generally sounded very good. The band sounded terrific. And I think, you know, the small stage and this, you know, as we're watching them, you know, I don't remember seeing the, this band on that small a stage anywhere where there's no video screens and no big, you know, big gaps between them they were literally like on top of each other if you you see any pictures of them on youtube or, or on the websites or anything they're literally on top of each other um and i think that that you know kind of had them locked in a little bit the sound i was i was astounded how good the sound was in that small club i mean it it just sounded fantastic yeah even the uh, you know the audience recordings that uh, surfaced on youtube yesterday were very good yeah you know, and um, you know what a critic i am of audience recordings yeah you know, they, they were, you know i mean obviously everyone seemed to have a cell phone waving somewhere yeah, and exactly. like, put that thing down you know watch the show the, how, how great is this going <laughs> to be you know you don't wor- don't worry about and some of the garbage that they post on youtube i have to ask myself and say do you really think somebody needs to see that uh, you know, <laughs> right. um, it's true. Uh, but you know i guess everybody wants their own little souvenir or exactly. photos or whatever but uh, I have to tell you, the highlight for me of the night, um, you know, look, you get the curveballs, the, the 909s and the matchboxes and stuff. That's always just a big, big treat. But in terms of just a, a sheer performance, I actually had to take my glasses off. At that point, I was taking notes just for the set list and things. And the glasses came up because I had to uh, I just kind of to wipe my eyes a little bit. His version of Let It Be on Saturday night was just Maybe it was because it's it's you know probably as close as I've ever been to watching him perform it live. It was just an unbelievable you know uh, emotion that came over me watching him do that song. He sounded just so good, his vocal uh, and his you know his uh, his reading and phrasing and everything on it was just terrific. So anybody that always wow. asks why does he do the why does he do Let It Be every night? Yeah, that's see? why. Okay, because right. it's that good. Exactly. Right. You know, um, you know the, look, there are, there are tons and tons and tons of songs uh, for a night like this that, you know, fill in the blank, woulda, coulda, shoulda done. Is it going to be my love? Is it going to be here, there, and everywhere? Is it going to be, what's it going to be next? Oddly, one of the, the omissions, which is a, you know, a, you know, pretty much a sure bet any other night was Long and Winding Road. Kind of yeah. surprised we didn't get that one. And as Al knows, that's one... Uh, when he does that one live and people ask, why does he do it? Mm-hmm. And just just yeah. kick back and listen. There's a reason he does that one every night. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very so good. that's, uh, that's you... pretty much uh, what happened there at the, uh, at the Irving Plaza. It was over by about quarter to one. It was at about a hundred minute show, uh, give or take. And then we went out into the freezing New York night. Tom, is this the first time you've seen, I'm trying to remember, because uh, I remember going to, uh, the up close shows at the Ed Sullivan Theater, and they were a real treat yeah. at the time when, when Off the Ground came out. Is this right. the first time you've seen Paul in a very intimate setting like this? Actually, uh, for a, a, you know, a, I don't know if you call this a concert proper. Yeah, the only other time and where I literally was up against him watching him perform uh, was when he did the Buddy Holly Week here, probably about fifteen years ago. Uh, when he was spending a ton of time in New York. I guess this would have been uh, probably 99 uh, when he came out and played with the Crickets. Uh, didn't even play with the Crickets. He sang with the Crickets. Uh, came out and did Rave On, uh, you know, and he was on the stage at Roseland, and we were literally, you know, elbows resting on the stage. That's how close we were. Uh, but that was it, one uh... song. That was one song only. But the, other than that, this would be as close as I, you know, I mean, I've seen him in small things at whatever it is, a press conference or um, what, you know, an album release party, something like that, mm-hmm. but not for a, a musical performance, no. Well, this reminded yeah. me of, uh, of uh, the joint, like I said. The joint wasn't that, wasn't that much bigger. 
I don't know how uh, offhand how how big it is, but I mean it was pretty tiny. And he, of course, did uh, live and let die that night. Mm. But uh, boy, that was uh, that was uh, one concert that I will never ever forget. That was sure. tremendous. Sure. And it Can't... sounded and it sounded fantastic. And and I'm and there are clips on YouTube if you if you look it up and you can see how great it was. And mm. Ken, if I remember correctly, you saw one of the shows he did at the Mean Fiddler in London, right? Boy, you've got a good memory there, Al. <laughs> so I know it's a long yeah, that, time ago. <laughs> yeah, that was probably, that's got to be the most memorable concert I've ever been to. I mean, I'm always going to have a fondness for the Wings Over America tour, but the only time I've ever been to England, I went with a few friends of mine, and as soon as we landed in London, we heard about the show at the Mean Fiddler, and whatever plans we had for our trip kind of changed right after that. So I did everything I could to try to get to that show. And, you know, the only thing I could I could think to say about it is that everything that you ever heard about going to the Cavern Club and being mm. packed in there like sardines. I mean, I literally couldn't move a step for two hours uh, seeing Paul there. He did an acoustic set and an, and an electric set. This is all in preparation for Unplugged. But um, I was probably maybe 15 feet away from Paul throughout the whole thing. And I really could not move my feet at all. For the whole yeah. duration of that show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. you know. I had a, a woman was... next to me leaning on me the other night. It was much the same thing. I, I told her, you know, she's going to have to buy me dinner pretty soon. That's how close and, and like, crammed in we were. Uh, and she was just uh -huh. trying to move over because the guy in front of her was, like, six and a half feet tall. So <laughs> <laughs> she she had her, uh, her challenges there. Yeah, but the mean fiddler definitely... Because he was he was he was eye level with me. He was you know mm -hmm. there was no high stage or anything. I could look directly right at him with the band at the time, and it was uh, as close quarters as you could get. So between that and also the up close shows, and I was mm -hmm. my God, I was so I was so lucky. I got to go to both shows for up close, mm -hmm. and um, you know there's nothing like seeing any of your favorite performers in an intimate show like that. That's so. True. Uh, Congratulations, you, Tom. You know, we, we, all, we all wish we were with you a few yeah, nights ago. It was, it, was, it was a great night. I won't lie to you. I'll, I'll tell you what, my, what really put it over for me was watching him do even uh, all my loving. Okay, he kicks it off, and he's got that walking bass line in there, and I'm watching him, you know, sing, you know, this song I've heard, you know, tens of thousands of times, but just I watched his bass playing you know, oh, yeah. up close, not on a big video screen or on a TV or anything. And watching him play the bass in that while he was singing that melody line, I, I turned to Lisa, I said, you know, it's got to be like riding a unicycle and doing long division in your head. I don't know how anyone does it. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah. A lot of people aren't aware of how difficult it is to play bass mm -hmm. and sing mm -hmm. at the same time. If, if the bass line is complicated... It's well, the same thing as playing yeah. the, a lead guitar part while you're singing, you know. Yeah. Sure, it's it was it, you know it's two different you know rhythm signatures and two different you know meters, and you know just watching him do it on Drive My Car even was just fantastic, just fantastic. But not only that, there's one more thing. When we've seen Paul at stadium shows, and you've mm -hmm. got the whole ambiance of a stadium, and and in most cases, whenever I see Paul, there's a lot of echo. You know, it's not the clearest sound you're going to hear. When you're in a small place like that at Irving Plaza, you probably got a much purer sound. And oh, you can yeah. hear it far more clearly. Well, you, you know, they have obviously the house PA, but we were, you know, front and center pretty much. So you were actually hearing it out of the amplifiers, too. You know, you were hearing what they were mm. hearing, which was kind of nice. Was it really, really yeah. loud? Not, I mean, not deafening loud. No, I mean it was, but it was, it was very, very energetic. Very, it had a lot of presence because we, you could almost feel like the, you know, the vibration from the kick drum. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so you had, you had that nice, you know, bass and and bass drum locked in, like little rhythm and punch, you know, coming at you every now and again. Because that was one, that was one thing about the joint. It was extremely loud. They did not. I don't think they turned the sound down. At least it didn't seem that way that night. Uh, I mean, not 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 even discussing "Live and Let Die." Mm. It was it was a pretty loud show that night. So, and in fact, speaking of the drums, one of the reports I saw said that Abe was um, able to be a lot more, you know, able to do a lot more than he normally mm -hmm. does 
in a in a typical McCartney show. Mm-hmm. It's actually funny. I was talking to a friend of ours who was there, uh, Ken Dashow from Q104. Sure. And Ken's Ken's a drummer, and you know he's a big Abe fan. And I said, did you notice what he was doing during Hey Jude? And he's, he just started laughing. Uh, actually, during the uh, you know the sing along portion of Hey Jude, when it's just the drum and bass keeping the rhythm while the crowd sings, Abe was doing you know, in perfect time, obviously, but doing all these little cool jazz fills. Uh-huh. That, uh, even I, I, the look on Brian Ray's face, if this thing ever, if that track shows up on YouTube or if this comes out on video or something, watch it because Brian is looking at him with this, oh yeah, kind of, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> really uh, this look of approval, like wow, you got it all going on right now. Um, it was it was really really cool. I gotta say the the you know the whole thing that led up to this. Um, you were saying that there were um, that I mean it, it, the the word was out there apparently you know a couple of days before among a few people not very many though and um, the way I heard about it was very interesting and at first I I wasn't tempted to to I mean it just sounded it didn't sound right and then I made I I checked into it and I got wind of something that that led me to believe that there was actually something to this mm. and um that's when i wrote it up so that was um that was very interesting i mean obviously you know McC- the mccartney people were gonna you know say yeah we're, we're doing something but um i got enough indication yeah. that something was about to happen and yeah. so that was that was great i mean it was it was it was and and the reaction of everybody you know was like really yeah well <laughs> you know? what was so. what was kind of nice is uh, as i mentioned in the article you know the fact that they called fans uh, mm-hmm. it kind of reminded me of these stories you used to read like in the wings fun club in the uh, sure. club sandwich yeah. right you know, that mm-hmm. you know paul's doing a video come on down um mm-hmm. you know he's doing a little in studio thing come on down um, this, you know, had all the, had all the hearkenings of that. Um, so it, it was kind of cool. Uh, and, uh, maybe I didn't point this out before. Clearly they didn't get everybody from the New York area. I don't know how many people are signed up, but it's gotta be more than 500. Um, get me. Yeah. Um, me. It, it, it appeared to be, be purely, purely, purely random because even Lisa, my girlfriend, um, you know, she's in the next town over, uh, she didn't get the call. Yet yeah. I did, so they must have just picked them truly at random. Uh, certainly, there was no you know sign up for a chance to win or any kind of lottery or anything like that. So again, purely purely random. And uh, hey, look, I didn't I didn't get the right six numbers last Wednesday night for the four hundred fifty million. So this will just have to do. <laughs> Which would you have preferred, Tom? <laughs> I think we all know the answer to that question. <laughs> <laughs> But, there we uh, go. but it was it was a good night. Certainly, nobody can complain that they didn't get their forty bucks worth. Let's we can leave it at that. Uh, the, the oh, the last thing I wanted to point out: um, once the the time and venue were locked in, and now people say, "Oh, that's because he's at Saturday Night Live this week," and "Oh, it's because of this," and "Oh, he's got a song in the top ten uh, coming up here." You know, with so Kanye's going to go up and do a song with him. Rihanna's yeah. going to go up and do a song with him. Billy Joel, Elton John. I mean, those were just, those were uh, four of the names that I heard of people that, um, you know, were, quote, rumored to, uh, you know, to be coming up as guests. And uh, Right. I have to take responsibility for the Elton John and the and the Billy Joel because yes, I, heard, I, I, heard, I, heard, I heard the tip and um, I thought there was enough credibility there to mention it well, so I, uh, in in line outside people were just you know oh, did you hear this and did you hear that and well you know they're all in town for this thing maybe paul you know i mean not anything you know confirmed just pure speculation oh maybe mm-hmm. paul simon will do a song with him oh maybe bon jovi will do a song with him it's like yeah we'll be here you know we'll be here till tuesday um, well, nobody <laughs> you know it, the details were didn't come out until the last minute sure. so that's what the, I think that's what that was all about. Sure. Nobody, you know, until they confirmed the show and said, this is what it is, then I think there was a lot of guessing, you know, that uh, of what was going to happen. And, you know, that, uh, that, so, anyway. But I'm glad you had a great time. It was, it was spectacular. It was, uh, it was really, really good. It'd be interesting mm-hmm. to see if anybody taped the whole thing. I uh, have not. Yeah, you know, I got to tell you, you could have got in. They gave the, you know, the... 
the cursory uh, pat down on the way in, but any any degree of thought, you know, could have could have snuck something in there. Um, and again, tons. I mean, everybody had a cell phone, right? So it's going to be a matter of who had the best uh, the best clip that they post on YouTube. But I haven't seen anything out there that's either complete or or uh, you know even something that you'd go back and watch, you know, more than well, once. Did you did you see any evidence of them of the of MPL recording yeah, the show? I I did see one camera on a tripod, and if there's one, there's more than one. Sure. Um, but I, I saw one in the upstairs uh, loge near the soundboard because uh, the soundboard there is elevated up a bit. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's where I saw them. I mean, certainly they had something going on. So, so there you have it. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd love to know whose idea it was, whether it was Nancy's idea or whether it was Paul's idea. Because re remember, this house, and I mean, he's never done anything to my knowledge like this before. So well, it, well, he's done the secret gigs where he shows up. Like he did for Memory Almost Full. He did one in New York, mm -hmm. and um, there were a couple of the you know those things at the joint and things. So he's done the little last minute surprise club thing before. But this one had a you know here come the air quotes a theme. It was you know Valentine's Night and you know the right. rose petals and the the you know the pictures and the the candy and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that 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 made it kind of nice. They definitely put some thought into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about the Amoeba Record Store appearance? That was a sure. You know, that was a great one. That, yeah. yeah. Imagine uh, Paul McCartney playing in your record store, a local record store. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Although wasn't that known in advance? Mm hmm. If I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was known in advance. The joint was the joint was ticketed. Okay. I mean, oh, that okay. Was a, that was a that was not a surprise show, because uh, yeah, because we heard about that in advance before we went. So, I think um, the Highline show for Memory uh, almost full was known a couple of yes. days in advance. I, yeah, I, I went I to that. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, the bracelets were so, there. So yeah. Right. Plus, plus he had done a bunch of those in different cities, so everyone knew that he was doing that kind of thing. This is a little different in that it's sort of one off in the middle of nothing. I like seeing him in in these intimate um, situations more than in the stadium shows. Oh, I mean, sure. I, I I saw the memory was almost full one. I saw up close. I saw the cavern. I mm. saw one oh, of wow. those Buddy mm. Holly shows, wow. but but apparently a different one than Tom saw because mine was at the Lone Star Roadhouse. But he right, did the same thing. The... He got up and mm. he just sang with the band. I thought he did like three or four songs, but I could be wrong. Yeah, it was up the, um, around the time the, that Buddy show was playing in New York, Steve. Yes. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 that yeah, was a ton yeah. of people. Pat Denizio was in that one. Dave Edmonds, a whole bunch of mm -hmm. people. Oh, yeah. That's right. Oh, in fact, were... actually, I mean, that was so strange. I mean, uh, for that one, I was at a table that was like right up at the stage, and the other people at the table were Pat Denizio and Lady Kravitz, and it was, yeah. you know, it was kind of, uh, it was kind of fun actually, and. Um, um, actually, a, a friend. I brought a friend of mine with me who had an Instamatic because in those days cell phones didn't take pictures, and, uh, right. and he took a bunch of pictures. And I called my editor the next day and said, "You know, I went to this thing last night. We we didn't have it scheduled to review or anything, but it was a lot of fun. I think we should do it." And he said, "Go ahead." And so I wrote a review and filed it, and he said, well, what are we going to do about pictures? And I said, well, I know this guy who had an Instamatic. <laughs> so my friend got his picture in the paper as well. Wow. So, it was, yeah, it was kind of. Uh, I don't want to take up time, but I, I'd love to hear sometime about the cavern thing. That. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that must have been great. Well, you all have the video and the record. Well, it was like well, that, we... except except <laughs> crowded. Yeah, <laughs> crowded mm. and hot, and uh, and I, I mean, my feeling about that was kind of, uh, you know, I wanted to see it next door in the replica cavern, not in the, in the yeah. big room that is kind right. of, a, you know, it, it. So I was a little disappointed at where they had it. Um, mm. So, but and and it was so 
crowded that you actually could barely see the stage. You know, it was completely mm. flat floor, yeah. and uh, you know, you're stuck in there. And it was, as you know, the winter. It was like December fifteenth, um, wow. so you're stuck in there with your winter coat on. <laughs> it yeah. was just <laughs> it was it was much more fun seeing it on video. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, there, there was. Uh, you know, when we got into the. Uh, into the Irving Plaza, you know, they're pointing and they say, oh, the show is upstairs, but down here there's a restroom, a bar, and a coat check. There's people checking their coats. I, I think the last one just got out about 10 minutes ago. Because, <laughs> you know, like, can you picture, can you remember, it's not like a restaurant. They're all leaving at the exact same time uh, with a thousand people's coats. I said, no, I'll, well, I'll keep the top coat on. I'll, I'll be fine. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. So good times. All right. Good times at the Irving yeah. Plaza this weekend. Yeah. So uh, another thing that just happened, and that was the following night, was the big Saturday Night Live special that was broadcast on television. And, of course, Paul McCartney was a part of that. And you were just talking briefly before, Tom, about the performance of Maybe I'm Amazed. And it certainly has gotten a lot of buzz uh, on the Internet, on Facebook and in social media. And um, just the whole discussion about Paul's voice doing the song. Before we even talk about that, Paul... Paul, both Pauls, Paul McCartney and Paul Simon, were on at the very beginning doing a short excerpt of I've Just Seen a Face, which was nice. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, just wondering what everybody thought of the show and certainly of of, uh, of Paul McCartney's performance. You know, we, we can't really talk about the entire show because we got to keep this focused on the Beatles for the most part. So um, what you guys thought about Maybe I'm Amazed? What, what did you think of the performance? Well, as the, the expert on bad singing, unfortunately yeah. documented, um, uh, <laughs> with, uh, the first couple of lines, I, I oh just kind God. of flinched because, yeah. I mean, he mm. really sounded terrible. And, uh, you know, he got, it got better as the, you know, as the song, especially as the intensity of the song, once you get past that first verse, you know, goes. Uh, mm. But... He clearly was not in good voice, and I have a feeling it's that what we got, because I mentioned this to somebody on Facebook this morning, was that what we got was the day or more night after, night after a gig, McCartney voice that were yeah. because if you notice, these days he hardly ever does two consecutive shows. Yeah, Generally, a most. Right. Yeah, and that's the reason exactly that sure. uh, that he just that his voice just cannot bounce back the yeah. way it used to. It's a demanding song. I mean, at, at yeah. any age, it's kind of interesting. I you know I didn't see it because we were out last night, uh, but I've kind of I just peeked at the DVR and yeah, those first few lines are just you know I, I don't know if he didn't have his monitor or his teleprompter or whatever was going on. But I said, you know, let me just see what people are saying, because a number of people had sent me emails saying, wow, what happened tonight? And mm -hmm. uh, the, the link to that performance is out on the Rolling Stone website, and they say, and I quote, Paul McCartney followed up his impromptu duet with Paul Simon of the Beatles, I've Just Seen a Face, with, you know, get this, a bombastic, bleeding heart rendition of Maybe I'm Amazed during Saturday Night Live's 40th anniversary special, while the performance itself was appropriately celebratory and thunderous, a hat mm -hmm. must be tipped to Keith, to Keith Richards' sly introduction. In the early 60s, mm -hmm. a band came out of England and changed the world, but enough about the Rolling Stones. Here's Paul McCartney. But, so <laughs> so the, 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 uh, the, the adjectives we got here were celebratory, thunderous, bombastic, and bleeding bombastic. heart. Mm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> oh, I, I think it means the apocalypse is upon us. I think that's about all I can get out of that. They just don't make journalists like they used to. <laughs> they, uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't like that anymore. <laughs> but I didn't write that. I yeah. just passed it yeah. along. Okay. Right. Yeah. I, I thought it was fairly appalling, actually. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I, I thought, you know, I mean, a lot of the time in recent years, he's sounded a bit off. And yet, you know, the next night or, or not obviously next night, but the next show, um, you know, as the recordings come in, he'll sound completely fine. Or when I saw mm -hmm. him in, in Yankee Stadium, mm -hmm. he, he sounded great. But... I, I don't know. I mean, it, as soon as it started, I, I didn't feel that it got better um, after the first verse. Um, I, I, <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, 
yeah. It was uh, I, I, I thought, you know, maybe it's time to take it down a step or two. You know, I mean, I realized that that means relearning the piano part and all that in a different key and everything. But um, it's it's probably time for him to do that. Uh, well, you, you know, know he, I, I think. Yeah, but- you know, done that. Even As a rule, like, he does Long Tall Sally. He he still does in the original key. I don't think. I think he somehow views that as kind of you know defeatist. Like if I got to take it down a step or two, you know, it's it's not the same yeah. song. Yeah, he takes pride in keeping it in the same key, and I understand that. But here's the thing: if you can keep it in the same key and hit the notes, great. And if you can keep it in the same key and you sound last night well I, i'm not sure that there's a great victory being won by ke- keeping it in the same key you know mm, I, agree. I mean his next step is going to have to be to do sort of what dylan does and just sort of growl through them in a way where you can't even recognize the song that's that's dylan's solution i'm not sure that it would make sense for paul to do it but yeah, he's going to have to come up with some sort of way to be able to sing the songs because after all keep in mind that you know one of the one of the qualities that everyone always admired about McCartney and people don't always say it you know this this you know directly is the the sheer beauty of his voice in its heyday mm-hmm. and it, it, you know it's yeah. not just that he was a great songwriter and a great bassist he was a great singer sure. and hear, hearing him singing at less than the, the greatest uh, it, it's just it's alarming you know um so i don't know what else to say especially, about that other than especially uh, when you're so used to hearing the studio version of maybe i'm amazed and also the wings over america version and it's been burned into your head for for all these years and then you right. hear this other version a more recent one but the thing is also you know tom you heard on the previous night he did that song yeah. and i'm sure that he sounded What's fine that? doing it then, you it's know, so yeah, probably yeah, in his mind. Yeah, he probably thought he could, he really could do good, it. But, but that's still one even Saturday night. And even when he does it, you know, when he's, you know, in full tour, you know, voice, uh, that's a hard one. You got to remember, even going back 25, 30 years on some of the comeback tours, that was one that had to be dropped because, I mean, that, that's a very vocally demanding song. Uh, and if if you're not in top 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 voice, you're just not gonna be able to pull it off. He he, mm-hmm. he definitely got through it on Saturday. It certainly was better than uh, you know when I watched the playback of uh, Saturday Night Live. But um, you know that that's a hard song to sing. I'm just kind of shocked that he picked that particular song. I mean, there's so many songs in his catalog, and don't get me wrong, that song is usually rated as being the best song in his solo catalog. But, you know, he could have easily uh, done any song from the Beatle years or a recognizable song from his solo career that wasn't as vocally demanding. But also, I was about to say, he probably felt that if, if he nailed it the other night, he probably could do the same thing the next night. So he's, he may not sure. be aware, just going into the song, what he's capable of. And usually yeah. before a concert, he has a whole sound check that he does for about an hour. So his mm-hmm. voice is all warmed up by then. If you're going cold yeah. right yeah, into exactly. a song, exactly. that's, that makes it even far more difficult, and people don't realize that. You bet. Mm. You bet. On top of the fact that he is 72 years old, <laughs> you know, right. you've got to add all that into, into, uh, yeah. into the it's equation. Like, it's, it's like a ball player who can't uh, play a day game after after a night game in the middle of the season because he's 36 years old and, uh, yeah. you know, it just can't catchers, do it anymore. Right? The catchers, they all know no no day game after a night game. You got it. Right. Yeah. Right. And what was the line in The Honeymooners about Dizzy Dean? They say he's <laughs> still, he warms up in the bullpen, but he still pitches. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. But, yeah. uh, you know, a lot of people are... The, the sad uh, effect of this all is that for people who normally don't even go to see Paul McCartney live, they watch this and they think, oh, his yeah, voice is uh, gone. But, right. but yeah. they don't get to see him when, when he is on top of his game. And well, he so still he was, is. He was on it Saturday, I'll tell you that. Yeah. I mean, how many times have we seen him in recent years when, for the most part, his voice has been really strong? And there's also, mm-hmm. you know, th- there is a pattern with a lot of singers where they'll start a concert and their voice is rough. And as the concert goes on, it, for some reason, gets better. So, 
you know, that's something you have to take into account. Yeah, you get in. I always remember going back to the 93 tour when the last show, the one that was in North Carolina, was broadcast on television. Mm -hmm. And by then, Paul had been very tired. Yeah. Sure. And you can kind of tell in his voice. And that's what the public gets to see. They don't get yeah. to see when he's really nailing everything. Yeah. So, so that's that's pretty yeah. sad. But it's right. yeah, it really is, and it's uh, but it's you know it's you know the natural course of events, and and he's yeah. and and he hasn't even uh, you know abused his his voice in the way that say a Sinatra did, or or Dylan or others. Uh, uh, you know, thirty or forty years of Jack Daniels and cigarettes, that kind of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Paul stopped smoking some years ago, uh, tobacco, um, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> notice and, how you uh, covered yourself there. But. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I don't think he really drinks much at all. He certainly doesn't. I'm sure he certainly doesn't drink Jack Daniels. So uh, it's just I think it's more the natural course of events, and it's just that he, he you know he's just reached the point where he can't do two nights in a row, and especially in a case like that where, like you say, he's going in cold and doing a song which you know which is really a uh, you know a real a real exercise for the throat. And if you actually were to to watch that program. Paul Simon closed the show with Still Crazy After All These Years, which I thought was the perfect song Absolutely. to end the show with, considering yeah. the fact that, first of all, that song came out in 1975, the same year that right. Saturday Night Live started. Same and, month. Uh, actually, really? The same month, yep. too? Same, same month, October of 75. Hmm. Yeah. My only uh, complaint there is that I wish he had come out in, in the turkey outfit. But yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it also is symbolic that the show is still crazy, you know, after 40 years of doing this. So it was the perfect song for Paul Simon to do. And also, um, Miley Cyrus did 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover. So from the same album. So it was, they were both two songs that came out when Saturday Night Live started. And I didn't see any real connection between Maybe I'm Amazed and Saturday Night Live. You know, maybe there could have been. I'm not saying, well, you should go back to 1975. Therefore, Paul has to do listen to what the man said, you know, yeah. but maybe something, I don't know, that that would more closely tie Paul in with with that show. Actually, coming up since since he since they showed the video when Father Guido interviewed him. You know, right. maybe because that was that was the first time he was on the show. So mm -hmm. or even one of the songs because he's been on now several times. Mm -hmm. And uh, he could have uh, pulled out one of the songs that he had done on one of the previous uh, uh, one of the previous appearances that would have been at least a, l a little easier on the on the uh, on the pipes. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and also I'm reminded of when the uh, Band on the Run remaster came out, and Paul went on and did uh, Jet, and I'm trying to think of what else he maybe he did Band on the Run, and also his voice did not sound that good then. So, you know, a lot of people who are not McCartney fans are seeing this and thinking that's what his voice yeah. always sounds like. So it was probably a situation, again, where he was in between tours or in between many dates or, you know, in, maybe there was a long gap between dates. So probably his voice was not warmed up and ready for that. So, you know, mm -hmm. he has to be aware. He should be aware of these things, I would hope. You would think. But yeah, I wonder if there was I mean, he must have warmed up his voice before going out on stage. I wonder, you know, if they real you know, if he realized he was gonna be okay or something, you know, before he went out there and, and you know, still went ahead with the song. And you know? he and he did sound fine, uh, doing I've just seen a face with Paul Simon. Mm. Right. So yeah. that's you know? that's not that's not vocally a demanding song. No, it's not. That's so, very true. Yeah, so he could have easily have picked one that wasn't as challenging. Mm -hmm. and Or he could have just taken the easy way out, and, and he could have done something like a rocker like I Saw Her Standing There, which would have gotten the crowd pumped anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, that's a song that everybody can relate to and everybody loves. It's such yeah. a, it's and, such would have, an and would have made... And it would have made sense after Keith Richards' intro of the you know, band coming over <laughs> yes! from England. And... Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
Right. All right. So that was great talking about Saturday Night Live and uh, our comments about Paul and his voice. So we have one more thing to cover. And actually, Steve, you were a part of this. You got to see Patty Boyd during her photo exhibit. So tell us uh, what that experience was like. Well, I was up there. I was up in San Francisco two nights uh, last week um, for the opening of the exhibit. The exhibit opened, I think, on Thursday, and she was there on Saturday. Actually, she was there both days because I interviewed her on Thursday. That's why we went up on Thursday, and um, and we talked for about half hour, forty minutes, uh, of which uh, the second part uh, I'm probably going to publish tomorrow. I published the first part a couple of days ago. And the and then Saturday uh, was the opening of the, the exhibit with the reception. Um, a lot of the photos, are, if you've seen the exhibit before, are the same. However, there are some different photos that she said that she had um, discovered in the years since. The, the, the big attraction, though, is the original painting that uh, inspired the cover of uh, the Derek and the Dominoes album, Layla. That painting hangs in her house, and I guess Eric, she. I think she told me Eric had picked that up, and um, and she's had she still has it hanging in her house, and she brought it to the exhibit, and uh, it was it's 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 a gorgeous painting. I printed uh, I think uh, I printed the uh, the print of it in the the story uh, one of the stories I've done already, but yeah, it's a fantastic painting, and um, to see it in you know, person like that uh, is is just a, an interesting experience. But the um, you know the the pictures themselves, like I said, a lot of the pictures are the ones you've seen before. The one she was very proud of that she told me about was the picture of George uh, at a, with the rainbow. And I'm not sure if I, I believe I don't believe I'm not sure if that was out before or not. But she. We, she talked about that extensively and said that that was one of her favorites and and then um the reception at the reception um i was surprised, i was hoping or i should say i was i was expecting to see a lot of people there you know recognizable the only one i recognized was henry diltz who um photographer who's taken morrison hotel crosby stills and dash there were a few other people there, but nobody that re- anybody would really know. But uh, Henry Diltz is the one that um, that everybody would know. So, but it was it was fun. Uh, the the reception was quite crowded. the The interesting thing, though, that both times we came back to San, uh, came came uh, home from uh, from the uh, gallery, the traffic was just absolutely terrible. On Thursday, it turned out it was because the president was in town. And they had all. He was staying at the Fairmont, which was right a few blocks away from the gallery, and a lot of the streets were blocked off. And then on Saturday was Valentine's Day, and everybody was up there for Valentine's Day uh, events in San Francisco. Which, if you look up Valentine's Day events in San Francisco, they have a. I, I won't say what they were, but they have a unique San Francisco flavor to them. <laughs> <laughs> and um some of them do some of them do but anyway the traffic coming out of San Francisco after that was horrendous and we ended up taking an alternate route home we finally got home we didn't get home very late but we were standing the traffic was standing still on on many of the streets but it was uh it was something but it was a, it was great it was great um but uh, she was she was great. The interview we did was very good. She talked. Uh, uh, I I went on some of the t- topics that we had discussed, and I asked her specifically about more song more songs that she had worked on, and she basically said that you know she uh, it wasn't as uh, there weren't any specific examples beyond the Savoy Truffle one that we came up with that she could, uh, you know, that, I mean, she said she, you know, gave him words to rhyme here and there, but nothing extensive like, you know, the, the idea to do Savoy Truffle. So Hmm. anyway, but it was, it was a fun night. Were there any photos that you saw of George or of the Beatles there that you never saw before? Of George, yeah, the, there were some George photos. She didn't have any uh, Beatle photos. There were the the gallery had other photographers photos by other people in there. They had the Mike Mitchell Washington Coliseum photos. They had the Robert Freeman, the Robert Freeman with the Beatles um, uh, photo. 
which, by the way, was going for, as I recall, forty thousand dollars. Oh, wow! <laughs> yeah, um, they had. Um, I'm trying to think of who else, who other, whose other photos were there. There were other photos there besides the. I remember the Mike Mitchell, and I mean, and I believe there were a couple of Bob Bonus photos too. But they had the Mitchell, and they had the um, they had the Robert Freeman. Um, they had a uh, yeah, Jim Marshall. The Jim Marshall candlestick photo was there also. But she didn't have any any uh, as I recall, she didn't have any Beatle photos. She did have George photos. Um, and the and the one that was really that I had not seen. It wasn't a George photo. It was uh, and I had it in the story I wrote. The one I had not seen previously to this whole thing was the last waltz photo, mm. which we we talked about. Um, when we when we uh, had her on here, um, she was there for that, and mm. she took a a photo of the stage, um, and she she talked about how uh, uh, Robbie Robertson called Eric at the last minute, and um, got him to come to San Francisco because Eric was on tour, but that was and she didn't know by the way the 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 Winterland is in San Francisco. It's it was fairly close to where we were, and she wasn't aware that. The place is no longer the place no longer exists that they had torn it down. But um, wow! Yeah, but it was it was fun. She was she was she was very talkative and very o- open about talking about stuff. So, all right. Well, thanks so much for that report, Steve. And before we go, we have uh, a big announcement, which I'm sure many of you have heard about, and that is that the Fest for Beetle fans, the one in March, it's actually March 20th through the 22nd, has been moved to a new location. Al and Tom, you're both very much involved with the fest. Maybe you can fill us in on that. Well, hey, uh, the, I, the, the main difficulty was that there was uh, there was an accident at the parking garage for the Empire Meadowlands, the what used to be the Meadowlands Hilton, and then became the Crown Plaza. Blah 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 blah. And it's now the Empire Meadowlands. It's the, the the hotel in Secaucus where the majority of the New York area fests have been for the last thirty some years. And uh, they uh, a snowplow crashed through the top of the uh, not terribly <laughs> sturdy parking garage there anyway, and uh, as well. There was damage to the exhibition area, so it became obvious that they just were not able to. Uh, it, it, it the the hotel, which is frankly old and somewhat dumpy anyway, just was not going to be a good, you know, a a, sta- a safe site for uh, for the fest, and uh, so. Mark and Carol had to very quickly come up with a new site, and Tom will tell you about that new site. Actually, Won't it's you, the it's the uh, Hilton Westchester in Rydebrook, right. New York. Right. Um, what used to be the Rye Town Hilton? Right, right, and actually, it was the site of a fest in 1982. I, I was at that, but would not recognize the building at all because it was the one and only day I was ever in there, and that was 30 three years ago or something. Right. Um, and undoubtedly it's been renovated at least uh, several times since then. But it yeah. is, a, it, it is uh, from all everything I've seen on the website, it looks like a great convention center, uh, as well as almost like a resort-like uh, hotel, you know, indoor pool, indoor tennis, indoor hot tubs and things. So uh, it, it, it's bigger than the, the typical uh, site that we use in, um, in Secaucus. You know, some people say, oh, my God, it's over the river and through the woods. Well, not if you live in Westchester, it's not. I mean, the people from Westchester find their way to Secaucus. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's the same distance going the other way. Yeah, it, it's got access to public transport. Um, so it, it should prove to be pretty good. What was nice is that none of the events or guests had to be shifted because of this. So it wasn't like, I don't know, Mark Rivera said, oh, I'm not going all the way to Westchester. Um, the the schedule of events and guests is um, is unchanged and actually still in development. I mean, Al uh, knows the hundred thousand parts that go into uh, putting together a schedule and trying not to in overlap the, in, guests with uh, you know with with different events that are going on, uh, mm-hmm. the hosting duties and things like that. So that's still all uh, being formulated as if it were going on in its normal site. Um, it, it should be terrific. It's a bigger hotel. All of the uh, if you had reservations, 
at the uh, Meadowlands Hotel. You're guaranteed a room up there. Uh, you know, the hotels worked closely together, which is something that Mark brokered uh, to make sure that people, you know, who had done the, you know, the early reserving and things were not going to get shut out. So uh, a lot of a lot of attention went into this uh, from the fan, you know, to make it as uh, fan friendly and seamless as possible. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody up there at the Rye Town Hilton. Go ahead, Al. Say it. Get your what ticket to Rye, right? Rye. Okay. Yeah, you get your ticket to Rye, <laughs> and uh, and we'll see you up there March twentieth. All right. So let's wrap things up here. If any of you would like to get in touch with us here at the program, we have an email address which is easy to remember. It's things we said today, radio show at gmail.com. If you would like to get in touch with me directly, I'm Ken. That's at every little thing at att.net. Also, if you can, please check out my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. There's Beatles trivia posted every single week with great prizes that I give away for that, as well as special contests. There may very well be a new special contest happening momentarily on Yoko. So hmm. check out the website for that, KenMichaelsRadio.com. Let's turn ourselves over to Alan. How can people get in touch with you? Um, well, you can find me on Facebook um, just as Alan Cozen or as Alan Cozen Remixed. I'm on Twitter as at Cozen and uh, just generally easy to find. And uh, Ken, you're having a Yoko contest. It's going to be yes. a copy of... Life with the Lions. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wasn't. I wasn't here last week. I we got a honeymooners <laughs> reference and a Life with the Lions reference. <laughs> so that's a special really night. Up. No matter how you slice it, that's a special night. <laughs> Absolutely. I want all my listeners to know that this was not a setup, so that Alan can could uh, mention this Life with the Lions. This is coming to you live. This is not on. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, you, you know, can we, cut it if you want. <laughs> well, you know, we messed up. We messed up last week. We we did not mention life with the lions. No, I, well, we didn't. And I thought about it, but I and I I didn't uh, I didn't do it. I almost oh. I tried. I thought about about doing that, Alan. <laughs> well, if Alan wants it well, in every show, he has to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I tried to All be right. here actually. I, I I got I got home early enough that with you guys starting so late that you were probably still in the middle of it, but I couldn't oh, get okay. in into the call. Anyway. Oh well. oh well. We should let you finish your ending and <laughs> I think you were gonna Al, ask about... I guess Al how he can be reached. <laughs> on Facebook at uh, Al Sussman, uh or on well. Twitter at at <laughs> ASUS forty nine. Or through Beetle Fan Magazine, www.beetlefan.com. Also on the uh, the Something New uh, blog site for Beetle Fan, uh, the piece that I referenced last week that I was doing on the whole brouhaha, social media brouhaha involving uh, Paul's work with uh, with Kanye and Rihanna and uh, Lady Gaga is up. And uh, has thus far gotten some very nice reaction. Mm -hmm. Yes, I've been sharing it on Facebook. It's an excellent article. Ah, thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Okay. Steve, how about you? Um, I can be reached at BeatlesExaminer at gmail.com. And I'm also on Examiner.com. Uh, if you search for me on Examiner.com under Beatles Examiner, you'll find me. And I'm also all over Facebook. And let's not forget that we have our own Facebook page at Things We Said Today. So if you can, please like us. And we're, and, also, uh, on, we're also on YouTube if you search for the, the show on YouTube. It's uh, yes. Things We Said Today Radio. Okay. And Tom, if people want to get in touch with you, how can they do so? Best way is through the Beetle Brunch website. It's brunchradio.com. There's a Contact Us um, page where you can you know send in your questions or comments, concerns, etc. Um, but most of my writings and, uh, and other things can be found there on the website as well as in Beetle Fan and even a couple of pieces on the Fest for Beetle Fans at thefest.com. All right. This has been wonderful. Tom, thanks for joining us again. Uh, we'll have you on my again pleasure. soon, I'm sure. My pleasure. Uh, it, was, it was great. Uh, if, you, if It sounded like I'm still on a bit of a high from Saturday. It's because I am. <laughs> Not a surprise there. I would be too. 
For Things We Said Today, I'm Ken Michaels, being joined by Steve Marinucci, Alan Cozen, Al Sussman, and Tom Fran Jones, thanking all of you for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Mm-hmm.